Sleepless Snoozecast, the podcast designed to help you fall asleep. On Snoozecast, we read excerpts from public domain works and occasionally original stories. We'd like to thank our listeners. If you enjoy our show, please review us on Apple Podcasts and also share it with a friend. The best place to listen to us is on our website, snoozecast.com. That way you can play a single episode and fall asleep without another one automatically playing. This episode is supported by the feeling of satisfaction and relief lying down in bed after a long day of work. Tonight, I'll be reading a story out of the Blue Fairy book called East of the Sun and West of the Moon, edited by Andrew Lang in 1889. This story is a Norwegian fairy tale about the search for a lost husband. Let's get cozy. Close your eyes. Relax your body into the softness of your bed. Now, take a few deep breaths. East of the sun and west of the moon. Once upon a time, there was a poor husbandman who had many children and little to give them in the way of either food or clothing. They were all pretty, but the prettiest of all was the youngest daughter, who was so beautiful that there were no bounds to her beauty. So once, it was late on a Thursday evening in autumn, and wild weather outside, terribly dark, and raining so heavily and blowing so hard that the walls of the cottage shook again. They were all sitting together by the fireside, each of them busy with something or other, when suddenly someone rapped three times against the window pane. The man went out to see what could be the matter, and when he got out there, there stood a great big white bear. Good evening to you, said the white bear. Good evening, said the man. Will you give me your youngest daughter, said the white bear, if you will. You shall be as rich as you are now poor. Truly, the man would have had no objection to be rich, but he thought to himself, I must first ask my daughter about this. So he went in and told them that there was a great white bear outside who had faithfully promised to make them all rich if he might but have the youngest daughter. She said no, and would not hear of it. So the man went out again, and settled with the bear, that he should come back again next Thursday evening, and get her an answer. Then the man persuaded her, and talked so much to her about the wealth that they would have, and what a good thing it would be for herself that at last she made up her mind to go and washed and mended all her rags, made herself as smart as she could, and held herself in readiness to set out. Little enough had she to take away with her. Next Thursday evening, the white bear came to fetch her. She seated herself on his back with her bundle, and thus they departed. 
When they had gone a great part of the way, the white bear said, Are you afraid? No, that I am not, said she. Keep tight hold of my fur, and then there is no danger, he said. And thus she rode far, far away, until they came to a great mountain. Then the white bear knocked on it, and a door opened, and they went into a castle where there were many brilliantly lighted rooms which shone with gold and silver. Likewise, a large hall in which there was a well-spread table, and it was so magnificent that it would be hard to make anyone understand how splendid it was. The white bear gave her a silver bell and told her that when she needed anything, she had but to ring this bell, and what she wanted would appear. So, after she had eaten, and night was drawing near, she grew sleepy after her journey, and thought she would like to go to bed. She rang the bell, and scarcely had she touched it before she found herself in a chamber where a bed stood ready-made for her, which was as pretty as anyone could wish to sleep in. It had pillows of silk, and curtains of silk fringed with gold, and everything that was in the room was of gold or silver. But when she had lain down and put the light out, a man came and lay down beside her, and behold, it was the white bear who cast off the form of a beast during the night. She never saw him, however, for he always came after she had put out her light and went away before daylight appeared. So all went well and happily for a time, but then she began to be very sad and sorrowful, for all day long she had to go about alone, and she did wish to go home to her father and mother and brothers and sisters. Then the white bear asked what it was that she wanted, and she told him that it was so dull there in the mountain, and that she had to go about all alone, and that in her parents' house at home there were all her brothers and sisters, and it was because she could not go to them that she was so sorrowful. There might be a cure for that, said the white bear, if you would but promise me never to talk with your mother alone, but only when the others are there too, for she will take hold of your hand and will want to lead you into a room to talk with you alone, but that you must by no means do that or you will bring great misery on both of us. So one Sunday, the white bear came and said that they could now set out to see her father and mother, and they journeyed thither, she sitting on his back, and they went a long, long way, and it took a long, long time. But at last, they came to a large white farmhouse, and her brothers and sisters were running about outside it, playing, and it was so pretty that it was a pleasure to look at. Your parents dwell here now, said the white bear, but do not forget what I said to you, or you will do much harm both to yourself and me. No, indeed, she said, I shall never forget. And as soon as she was at home, the white bear turned round and went back again. There were such rejoicings when she went in to her parents that it seemed as if they would never come to an end. Everyone thought that he could never be sufficiently grateful to her for all she had done for them. Now they had everything that they wanted and everything was as good as it could be. 
They all asked her how she was getting on where she was. All was well with her too, she said, and she had everything that she could want. What other answers she gave, I cannot say, but I'm pretty sure that they did not learn much from her. But in the afternoon, after they had dined at midday, all happened just as the white bear had said. Her mother wanted to talk with her alone in her chamber, but she remembered what the white bear had said. It would on no account go. What we have to say can be said at any time, she answered. But somehow or other, her mother at last persuaded her, and she was forced to tell the whole story. So she told how every night a man came and lay down beside her when the lights were all put out, and how she never saw him, because he always went away before it grew light in the morning, and how she continually went about in sadness, thinking how happy she would be if she could but see him, and how all day long she had to go about alone, and it was so dull and solitary. Oh, cried the mother in horror, you are very likely sleeping with a troll, but I will teach you a way to see him. You shall have a bit of one of my candles." which you can take away with you hidden in your breast. Look at him with that when he's asleep, but take care not to let any tallow drop upon him. So she took the candle and hid it in her breast, and when evening drew near, the white bear came to fetch her away. When they had gone some distance on their way, the white bear asked her if everything had not happened just as he had foretold, and she could not but own that it had. Then, if you have done what your mother wished, said he, you have brought great misery on both of us. No, she said, I have not done anything at all. So when she reached home and had gone to bed, it was just the same as it had been before. And a man came and lay down beside her, and late at night, when she could hear that he was sleeping, she got up and kindled a light and lit her fire, let her light shine on him, and she saw him, and he was the handsomest prince that eyes had ever beheld. And she loved him so much that it seemed to her that she must die if she did not kiss him that very moment. So she did kiss him, but while she was doing it, she let three drops of hot tallow fall upon his shirt, and he awoke. What have you done now? he said. You've brought misery on both of us. If you had but held out for this space of one year, I should have been free. I have a stepmother who has bewitched me so that I am a white bear by day and a man by night. But now all is at an end between you and me, and I must leave you and go to her. She lives in a castle which lies east of the sun and west of the moon, and there too is a princess with a nose which is three ells long, and she now is the one whom I must marry. She wept and lamented, but all in vain, for go he must. Then she asked him if she could not go with him, but no, that could not be. Can you tell me the way then, and I will seek you, that I may surely be allowed to do that? Yes, you may do that he said. But there is no way thither. It lies east of the sun and west of the moon, and never would you find your way there. When she awoke in the morning, both the prince and the castle were gone, and she was lying on a small green patch in the midst of a dark, thick wood. 
By her side lay the same bundle of rags which she had brought with her from her own home. So when she had rubbed the sleep out of her eyes and wept till she was weary, she set out on her way, and thus she walked for many and many a long day, until at last she came to a great mountain. Outside it, an aged woman was sitting, playing with a golden apple. The girl asked her if she knew the way to the prince who lived with his stepmother in the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon and who was to marry a princess with a nose which was three ells long. How do you happen to know about him? inquired the old woman. Maybe you are she who ought to have had him. Yes, indeed I am, she said. So it is you then, said the old woman. I know nothing about him, but that he dwells in a castle which is east of the sun and west of the moon. You will be a long time in getting to it, if ever you get to it at all. But you shall have the loan of my horse, and then you can ride on it to an old woman who is a neighbor of mine. Perhaps she can tell you about him. When you have got there, you must just strike the horse beneath the left ear and bid it to go home again. But you may take the golden apple with you. So the girl seated herself on the horse and rode for a long, long way. And at last she came to the mountain where an aged woman was sitting outside with a gold carding comb. The girl asked her, if she knew the way to the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon. But she said what the first old woman had said, I know nothing about it, but that it is east of the sun and west of the moon, and that you will be a long time in getting to it, if ever you get there at all. But you shall have the loan of my horse to an old woman who lives the nearest to me. Perhaps she may know where the castle is. And when you have got to her, you may just strike the horse beneath the left ear and bid it to go home again. Then she gave her the gold carding comb, for it might perhaps be of use to her, she said. So the girl seated herself on the horse and rode a wearisome long way onward again. And after a very long time, she came to a great mountain where an aged woman was sitting, spinning, at a golden spinning wheel. Of this woman, too, she inquired if she knew the way to the prince and where to find the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon. But it was only the same 